Hello, and welcome to the Built on Air podcast. Built on Air is a regular podcast where we talk with everyday people and learn about the amazing things they are doing with Airtable. Today's podcast is sponsored by OpenSide, the leading solutions provider for Airtable customers. Check out OpenSide.com to learn more about their products and services that can take your Airtable usage to the next level. Use promo code BUILTONAIR to receive $20 towards any product purchase. Today, we chat with Kevin S. Lin, software developer, AWS consultant, and startup founder. After over five years at AWS, Amazon Web Services, Kevin set off on his own to help others get the most out of their cloud-based systems. His company, Fence, aims to help businesses put scalable systems in place, reduce costs, and make sense of the cloud. Kevin has a passion for data and uses Airtable to sort, track, and organize several aspects of both his work and personal life. He tells us about his latest project, a scalable knowledge base, which can be used to organize any amount of information and find it again in seconds. In today's episode, Kevin shares with us a demo of his product, Backup Table. Backup Table allows you to back up entire Airtable bases, every field of every table, for free. Users with a paid account can even back up attachment fields and set their backups to run on an automated 24-hour schedule. Hi, Kevin. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. Welcome to Built on Air. Thanks. Good to be here. Of course. Um, I figured we'd just start with a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so um, I'm a software engineer. I specialize in backend systems, mostly cloud architecture, so mostly AWS. Um, I actually spent my last six years working at AWS, and I left at the end of 2019 to start my own company. Um, so for this year, for the first half of the year, most of that was building an independent AWS consulting business. And so I work with companies on um, optimizing the AWS stack, whether it be security, scaling, pricing, or a whole bunch of different issues. and. So I spent the first five, six months building that up to a place where now it's consistent and steady. And I spend, um, nowadays, I spend around 20 hours of my time on consulting and 20 hours of my time building products. Um, the first product that I built, and also the reason I think that Dan reached out to me, is uh, around Airtable. Um, I've started using Airtable basically when it came out, and I thought it was brilliant, and it was such a great way of like putting a lot of uh, the things that I care about. But I also noticed that, okay, like now Airtable had like all my important information and it was only available online and it, it is still a startup. And so that always makes me nervous. Mm -hmm. And as an engineer, in some sense, rather paranoid about these things, um, the first thing I would do, or I did, is build a backup solution for myself. So I had a bunch of scripts. I would take all my tables and back them up. And then something that I noticed going over Airtable forums and talking to other friends who did this is that this was something that a lot of people were looking for. And so I ended up doing a little bit more work to build a web portal around it. And um, it now is a SaaS service that's online. And I have, a, yeah, so I have customers actually from around the world that now use it to back up Airtable. Um, and I'm sure that's something we can talk about later um, if interested. Um, and then most recently, I um, started working on another SaaS product. It's a knowledge base that you can query like a database. And the whole idea there is that we have so much information available to us, like on the internet, in Airtable, and Evernote, and whatever you know, information storage style that you use. But the problem is it's so really hard to find that one thing that you're looking for. Um, and so it's a knowledge base that's emphasis on being able to find exactly what it is that you need instantly. And so those are some of the things I'm working on and some of the things that are on my mind. Yeah, that's awesome. And congratulations on starting your own business. That's awesome. Thank you. That sounds like it's going really well. Yeah, yeah. It's the fortunate thing of just trying to pick what you work on on any given day. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So AWS, that's Amazon Web Service? Yes, uh, sorry. So for people who are not familiar, AWS is a division of Amazon. It stands for Amazon Web Services, and it's basically the public cloud. 
um, it helps other companies run their digital infrastructure. So actually, Airtable runs on AWS. Okay. Zoom, which we're using to make this call, let us on AWS. Um, mm -hmm. Most tech, uh, like web-based businesses today, run some sort, or if not everything, on AWS. So it's um, it's got a big. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> definitely. I know uh, the intranet that I'm familiar with using at work is run by AWS as well, or yeah. run on it rather. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, lots of tech uh, experience behind you and under your belt. So that's great. Um, so you found Airtable like when it came out pretty much? Yeah, um, I don't exactly remember where I first heard of it. I think it was somewhere on Hacker News um, or like TechCrunch. But it's something I check out because I am pretty obsessed with like knowledge bases. And so mm -hmm. like I've used basically everything from like Evernote and OneNote and Workflowy and Confluence and wikis. And so Airtable was something in that space. And I'm interested in basically everything in that space. Um, and when I started using it, I think it was brilliant just because like it was kind of like Excel in the mm -hmm. sense that you had like the goods and but you could store data in it that was not just like numbers and formulas. Mm -hmm. And I actually know that a lot of people, myself included, we've like hacked Excel to like be like Airtable, where you can like store contacts because that structure is really nice. Um, but it was really nice having a product that actually supported that instead of forcing that use case upon Excel. Yes, that's so funny. I have pretty much an identical story of how I found Airtable as well because I was trying to make Excel do things that it just couldn't do, like yeah. talking to different sheets and it just wasn't clean or anything. And yeah, Airtable really stepped in and filled that gap really, really nicely. Um, yeah. So have you seen it evolve like a, a ton since then? Are you happy with the direction it's going in? Yeah, I think uh, since the launch, it's been good to see Airtable like add more features. Um, mostly it's been in the form of, well, now we support more data types. Like before it used to be like just long form text. Uh, now you can add collaborators. Um, and most recently they have a beta for like markdown. Um, long text, which that is really exciting. Because, um, yeah, that's actually, I write all my long form text is in Markdown. It just doesn't render it. So it's nice that Airtable can support that. Um, I think the other thing that has changed is Airtable blocks. Um, mm -hmm. So those are, if you have the, whatever the subscription over Pro is, yeah. you have access to these blocks that can do additional things with your data. Um, I haven't really played around with that that much because I actually find that just using the normal Airtable, I get most of the functionality that I need. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking I might be converting to Pro just because I'm hitting like the limit of some of my bases. Um, but I think in general, like I've been really impressed at like the core set of features that they've launched. Like it's been able to carry me all this way, and I, um, outside of like having offline support, um, it's basically done like everything that I wanted to do. Yeah, it's it's great. And and I love that it can work well and uh, fit different scenarios for someone like you that's very experienced in IT and tech and also for somebody who might not have any experience as well. It's super easy to pick up and use. Yeah, and that's really hard to strike that balance between mm -hmm. having something that functional that doesn't just get too complicated but also doesn't get neutered because like sometimes you sacrifice features in the sake of simplicity or sometimes you sacrifice simplicity for features and i think airtable has really like walked that line between the two yeah absolutely so um what what uh what are like the favorite use cases that you're using airtable for right now yeah so i started so when i started using airtable um one of the things that I was using it for was just to keep track of contacts. Um, this was especially like when I left to start my consulting business. Mm -hmm. And so it was, well, you have a sales funnel of like, these are the people I just started talking to. These are the people that I'm currently in negotiations with. So like where people are in that sales funnel. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that actually a really useful way to like track clients and make sure that I'm not dropping the ball in communications. That actually extended that to basically my entire network. And so, like, um, everybody that I keep in contact with, 
happen. I have a ginormous space with just people. Um, and it, um, I do this, what I do is I also track encounters, which is a separate table that's linked. And so um, for each person, that I meet, I have like an encounters and it tells me from the encounters, it tells me like how long it's been since the last time we talked. Mm -hmm. And so it's a way for me to like keep in touch with people, both with clients and like friends and also like coworkers. I have this elaborate routine where essentially I have a sorted list of here are the people that, you know, you haven't talked to now for like 30 days. And then um, a regular schedule to like set aside time every day to go through that list. That is so cool. I really, I really appreciate that. Like I, yes. been, and I love that you extended it to your entire network as well. Like, uh, I think that's becoming like the new age of data is like personal tracking and like analyzing every bit of your own life as well as like work data, which I just find super yeah. interesting. Yeah. And I find it like, it's, it can be a, like you take some time setting it that but afterwards it's like a super um like lightweight process i spend maybe six to ten minutes of it a day mm -hmm. and for that it's people then think you have like the superpower of like man you're like you're so good at like keeping in touch with people and like knowing like show the memory like what we talked about last time and whatnot but like it doesn't take that much yeah. and i find at least the value i get out of that like personally and business-wise is enormous that's so cool so, and you're also a um, a blog writer and a podcaster yourself, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, though for blogging, so blogging and podcasting, I do it around like once a month. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for those, it's like, it's never as much as you want. But when you're doing multiple things, it's just figuring out like, what is that frequency that you can handle and then being okay with that. Absolutely. And do you use Airtable like in planning your blog posts or your podcast at all? Yeah, so for that, for my blog posts, I do have a table of just like ideas. Mm -hmm. So it's like things that I want to write about. Um, when I'm actually in the writing process, I just, um, I use a, a text editor called Vim. Um, a lot of programmers use it to write code, but I find that it's also really good for writing text, yeah. um, for writing blog entries. Um, and it's kind of, it's funny though, because like, um, it's kind of like Excel where like it really wasn't meant to write things that are not code, but I just find it so useful that I make it work for me. Um, yeah. And then for uh, my podcast, so that's, it's called Folk Stories. And I have an hour long conversations with people that are interesting to me. Um, I use it to actually track questions that I like. So I listen to tons of different podcasts. And what I make a note of is questions that hosts will ask. Yeah. Um, and I classify those questions into like, okay, here's like intro questions versus segue questions versus like questions where like, crap, I don't know what to say. So here's a question that will always be good. Like, you know, what's the last few books you read? Or like, you know, like what is something that you have as a morning routine? And so I have like different categories of questions. And so I use an air table to like track all the questions that I find interesting. Um, and I also have feels on like, did I actually try this out or like, am I like, you know, how into my repertoire is said question currently? Wow. That's like mind blowing. I find that so cool. Like I, I mean, I'm very into podcasts myself. Um, and just take the time and I've actually been paying more attention to that as well. I mean, in this new role that I'm in as a podcast host as well. So that's super cool. I'm going to probably just try and start doing something like that as well. Yeah, definitely. I highly recommend it. That's so cool. Um, so I'm interested in hearing more about this knowledge base that you were talking about. Um, yeah. So what, uh, what sorts of information are being put into this base? Yeah. Oh, boy. So this is the thing that I think my most difficult part of this is, is trying to explain it. Yes. So. Uh, the quality might uh, be varied, but um, essentially the reason that I built this is because like I worked for six plus years on cloud on AWS. Mm -hmm. And the thing that is relevant about that field is just the body of knowledge. is just so big. You can't hold it in your head. And so you have to reference it, but not only is it so big, it's changing all the time. So like what you know this week can be outdated next week. Mm -hmm. um, and so at that point, it's not just like you can't know what is there. It's not worth memorizing it because it changes. Yeah. And so what you need 
to do is you need to have a way to like reference essentially equivalent of like tens of thousands of documents like instantly. Um, and so this came out of a need for me, like in order to do my job well, in order to like stay on top of this crazy field, I needed something that worked better than searching Google. Because like if I search Google, I could eventually find it probably, but that actual search can take anywhere between 30 seconds and a minute. Mm -hmm. And I need to do this like multiple times every minute. Um, and then all the current tools like Evernote and OneNote, um, it wasn't really useful because like once you get over like a thousand notes, mm -hmm. you can't really organize it into notebooks. And so then you search it. And at that point, it's like a worse version of Google. <laughs> um, and so, um, the analogy I guess I kind of use for this is like you know, for Airtable, um, like one of their lines is like giving everybody the power of a database. Because um, mm -hmm. like traditionally, like, you know, databases, you could hold lots and lots of information and Airtable was a way for you to like organize it and see it. Um, there's a second part of databases though, which is querying for information. So what databases let you do is even if you have like millions of rows and tables, you can do a query to fetch exactly one single column or one single row. And if you look at that right now, that is not something that we can do with our information. We can't do that actually, even on Airtable. Um, and you can't do it on Evernote and on Google, the same. So the idea is like focusing on the query part of, okay, like I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for you know, the pricing documents for this particular service of this subservice. I know that it's there. How do I access it? How do I query for that and get just that result and not anything else? All right. Yeah. That's so cool. So is it like across just any application or just is it like industry wide or are you narrowing it on a couple or? Yeah. So, I mean, ideally the idea is like for any field where you feel like you're overwhelmed with information and you just need to reference things all the time. Like it's something that could be applicable. So I have um, potential like clients in like law and medicine and engineering. Mm -hmm. um, initially at launch, I'm focusing on the dev space. So like cloud architects mm -hmm. and uh, full stack developers, just because it's somewhere for me to start off and it's like a problem that I know well. Yeah. Um, but the idea is like eventually where I would like to see it is that, well, any place where you need to store information and you need to find it again, then like this is something that you would be able to use for that. Absolutely. No, that's super cool. And that's you're working on a like a full product launch for that? Yeah. So the product it's called Alpha Cortex uh, .io. Um, right now we're looking at doing an early access in the middle of November and then probably a full product launch um, early next year. That's so cool. Good yeah. for you. And then uh, your your uh, consultant company is called is it Fence. Yeah, Fence. Um, it's a literary term. It means coming from a place. I like that. Yeah, that's kind of beautiful. Thanks. I yeah, I like it too. And no, that's great. Absolutely. Um, so I'm interested. What uh, your favorite um uses are for Airtable right now. Um, you have mentioned wanting to talk about your favorite formula and integrations and. Yeah. Um, so my favorite uses, I think the one that I predominantly use it for is to keep track of people. Yeah. Um, and like for some of that, for uh, some of the formulas I use, for example, um, because I keep a track of people in a table and I also keep track of like encounters. Um, every encounter has a data associated with it. And then I use a rollup field in people to keep track of, well, what was the date of the last encounter? Yeah. And so I have the date of the last encounter. And then I have a separate field that tracks how many days it's been since the last time we talked, um, which is calculated as today minus the last time we talked. <laughs> and so now for like every single person, um, I have like how long it's been since we talked. Um, right. just based on the encounters. And then I also have a tag, um, like a grouping tag. And so like I group people into like business versus acquaintance versus like right now for Alpha Cortex, I have like early beta users. And so I have groups of them. Mm -hmm. And so what I do then is I make different uh, views um, under people. And so like one is just like the entire 
data dump. This is every single person that I keep track of. And then I have another view for just business. So these are the people that I'm currently engaged with for my consulting business. But then I also have another one for um, Alpha Cortex. And so that's like, okay, here are the people. And I use that as like a Kaban board where like I've requested feedback from these people. I need more feedback from these people. And here's like the current status. And here's like the number of days since the last time, like we've gone back to each other. Um, and so that, that people's table, um, I use it for basically half a dozen different like businesses and use cases, mm -hmm. but they all spawn from um, the way that they differ is I filter based on like the grouping tag. And then that base has maybe like 30, 40 columns. And so like certain columns only apply for certain use cases. Right. Oh, that's awesome. Super, super cool. Yeah. And are you uh, integrating that with anything else right now? Is it a solely Airtable? So right now for pe the people uh, base, like that is solely Airtable. I've been thinking of like doing an integration with like my contact book, for example, because like if I write somebody's email, I don't rather have like one place to sync it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just really been a matter of time. Um, I just haven't had time to that. The one integration that I have made with Airtable, um, there's a plugin online called I think it's called Anki to your table. I can give you the exact link later on if your listeners are interested. And basically what that does is that um, there's a tool called Anki, which it helps people remember things by creating flashcards. And it uses a technique called space repetition where they will first show you the flashcard. And as you get the flashcards right, it'll take longer and longer until you see the flashcard next. Um, and the whole idea is that your memory degrades on a curve. And so every, and Anki tries to follow that curve so that it shows you the flashcard just about the time when you're about to forget it. Um, and so I use Anki, but like I keep a lot of things that I want to like remember in Airtable. And so what that uh, plugin does is it basically syncs, you can select certain bases and certain tables and it'll automatically create flashcards from those tables. That's super cool. So you can like uh, quiz yourself or just try and hone in your own memory skills. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So I think now would maybe be a good time to uh, share your screen if you want to show us a little bit about your backup program. Yeah. I'm sure. A lot of Airtable users are going to be excited to see it. OK. So you should be able to see my screen at this point. I do. Great. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'll just walk over the whole flow. So the tool that I built, it's called Backup Table, because uh, I figure it's a descriptive name for what it is. Um, and it's a single purpose thing. It, back, it backs up your tables and backs up your attachments on your table. Um, there's a list of features. Um, and the way that you start, um, you create an account. Um, so right now, if we I'm going to do a live demo because live demos never fail. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and I am going to do bail out there. So we're just going to create an account. Um, and so just to make sure that you're an actual person, I send a confirmation code before your account is created. So if we go into the email, there we go, there's an update. One idea of um, the thought behind going through the whole user flow is to show that you can actually go from nothing to having your tables backed up in a couple minutes. Um, this is not an extended process. Um, so when you first create your account, what you do is you need to import your basis. Um, so what you do, this part is actually quite interesting. We have a little bookmarklet that you can drag to your uh, tools folder. Um, and what you do is, is then you go to your Airtable, and then you click the bookmarklet. And the reason that you do that is because Airtable actually doesn't give developers access, an easy way to access all the keys. And so the bookmarklet is able to basically scrape your tables in your account. It's, um, and right now, that's the only way you can actually get the basis. All right. um, 
And so what this requires is your Airtable API key. So everybody has one. And if you don't know what it is, there's instructions on the site. Um, one thing to note, though, is your API key. It's kind of like your password, so you don't want to share it with anyone. I'm going to show it here because this is a test account I just created for the purposes of viewing this demo. Um, and it'll be deleted afterwards. Um, but yeah, you enter your key. And then as you can see, um, we've picked up all your workspaces since this is a new account. It's just your sample workspace. So you have your workspace, you have your basis, and you have your tables within those spaces. Um, then what you do is you just hit backup. And what is happening now is we are actually just getting everything from Airtable. Um, because you don't have a lot of data, it's already back now, it's been backed up. You can just download it. And what you get is a zip file. And when you open that zip file, What you end up with is you end up with all your tables and CSVs for every single table. Um, if you had attachments, you would also get attachments. The only thing for the attachments is that, um, so backup table, there's a free tier where you can back up your table. But if you want automatic backups where we back up every day on your behalf and also to save attachments, then it's a pro account, which is $6 a month. Um, and we also, we're going to have a, a business account coming up next week where you also get to sync your backups with um, Google Drive and other third party sources. Um, if you want to see what that kind of looks like, I have, um, so I use my own product because I like having my tables backed up. <laughs> and so, anyways, you can see that I actually have a whole bunch of different uh, workspaces. I actually have two pages of workspaces and tons of bases. Um, and when we download here, um, something to notice, this is actually a, a 100 megabyte download because I have tons of attachments. Um, but anyways, this is just a showcase of like the difference between like the basic and then the pro yeah. version. Yeah, please. I have to say, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the idea here is just, it's a really simple way for you to just have that piece of mind of knowing that if anything happens, you have your data and it's offline. And I know that for a lot of people, like Airtable is like what they run their business off of. And so it's just something to know that you have it in case something bad were to happen. Absolutely. That's a huge problem a lot of people have been wanting to solve for a long time. And it sounds like you've definitely provided the solution. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see what is it, uh, what's the download look like with all the attachments? Yeah. So for the attachments, um, Let's see, here it is. So as far as what it looks like, um, we give you basically all your tables, and every table is a folder. Um, for your attachments, they are just another um, entry in your folder. Um, I'm trying to just remember which base I have attachments in, because I have a lot of bases. So yeah. I believe people too. So yeah, as you see, like I have like pictures of people. So the attachments are just um, the individual files within the folder. And then when you actually open the CSV, you have the, the link um, to those particular files. Awesome. That is so cool. Yeah. How long did it take you to put this together? I'm just curious. Yeah. So to write the actual backup script for myself, that was maybe like an hour or two uh, um, that wasn't very much. But to build up a SaaS service around it, because um, you're dealing with authentication, you're dealing with payments, which are handled with Stripe, you're dealing with membership, mm -hmm. um, customer support, that process took probably closer to a month that is like working on and off on it. Right. So well, that's really, really cool. So backuptable.com. Yeah. That's great. I'm totally going to go check it out myself as well. Yeah, please do. And let me know. And right now, I'm doing a special promotion where if you sign up for the pro account, because um, the business account, uh, the Google Drive syncing, that is something that we'll be releasing either next week or the week after. Mm -hmm. um, you'll get the business plan for free for the first six months if you are pro at that awesome. time. Yeah. Great. Well, that's perfect. We'll definitely put a link to it uh, to this in the show notes. Yeah. Awesome.
Well, that's super cool. Thank you so much for showing, uh, sharing that with us. Yeah, no problem. And yeah, thanks for the interest. I'm always happy to talk about this stuff. No, me too. I could talk about it forever, seriously. Yeah. I, I just love how it's, uh, every use case is a different story, different industry, and it really just fits pretty much anybody who wants to start using a database. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it's giving, I mean, it's, I think, like, giving everybody that power which like it's a huge lever it's a huge um i love tools i love anything that can help people be better and so i think airtable is one of those things where like you can just take um you can take a person and make them that much more effective absolutely and it looks like your tool is adding to that as well so. yeah hopefully so <laughs> No, I thank you for that. That's great. I know a lot of people that have been asking about how they can get automatic backups, so I will point them your way. <laughs> thank you. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Uh, no problem. And yeah, thank you again. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>